In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today I wanted to talk about five people in my life, religious uh, folks, who made a, a deep impact in my religious formation and who I am today as a person. And so I made a list on my phone here. Um, these are people through my life, basically from high school beyond college, um, who really deeply impacted me. And, and this is why I feel so strongly that Catholic education is important because it gives you opportunities and exposure to religious people that you normally wouldn't have unless maybe as an adult you get spiritual direction or happen to be friends with someone who's a, a priest or a nun or a sister or you know deacon whatever um it's rare to have a relationship with a religious person to the level where they deeply impact you but sometimes you'll have a casual acquaintance uh with someone or you'll hear a speech they might say and it'll deeply impact you but um without further ado i do want to get to these five folks so I'll start um, chronologically with uh, three priests in my uh, high school experience who deeply impacted me. And so I went to an all boys Jesuit uh, school in California and the Jesuits are in order of the Catholic church. Um, they do a lot of education and so one of uh, the folks um, who deeply impacted me was an older priest, my Latin teacher, named Father John Kelly. And <laughs> why did I choose Latin? I don't know. But Father John Kelly um, had been teaching Latin for many years. And I remember the first day I walked into his Latin class and he called on this one student who apparently had some language experience. He was a sophomore and I was a freshman. And he started just reading the Latin book and I was like, um, are we supposed to know this? Like, I don't know what we're reading at all. And, and but he was very much like a classical educator, like from the old school. Um, but I had Father Kelly for uh, multiple years, um, freshman year, and I think maybe part of sophomore year and then senior year. And um, I, I, I took four years of Latin and and um, I passed the AP Latin test and everything. So I, I really enjoyed it. And Father Kelly was, he, he had a very dry sense of humor. So like he would tease um, some of the students in the class. And uh, if we were making a lot of mistakes, he, he would start praying just in Latin, just out of the blue, like, Father, give me patience, give me strength, you know? And then he would start like going off on this long um, Latin prayer. <laughs> and it was really kind of entertaining. Um, but so we had a lot of laughs and not that Father was really trying to be funny, but I, I think he, he wound up being entertaining. Um, I How did he influence me? I think just because he was... Um, very dedicated to what he was doing. You know, he, he didn't have to teach anymore. He was probably in his eighties. Uh, but he said he was, he was building up, um, treasure in heaven by teaching. And that always struck me, you know, um, that sense of duty and that sense of wanting to contribute and build up treasure in heaven through your good works. Um, not, th not that that's enough to get you into heaven, just solely your good works, but he had many other good facets about him. And, and in many ways, because I didn't have a grandfather, he was kind of like a grandfather figure in my life. And so my senior year in high school, um, I remember one Friday, you know, saying, we were, we were talking about like where we would like to be, um, where we would like to live, like if he could live anywhere in the world. And he always said he wanted to live in, in Italy and like live with, you know, an old um, widow, or, widow or something in Florence, Italy. Um, Apparently, though, that weekend, he got pneumonia and died suddenly. And I didn't realize this, but he had diabetes for many years. And so he was he was kind of not in the best health, um, but he never really showed it. You know, he walked slow and whatever, but he never really showed that he was in poor health. Um, and it, it really struck me. You know, I, I cried a lot after he passed away. I felt it very deeply, like his loss. And... Um, during my graduation ceremony, I was a valedictorian, so I gave a speech 
about Father Kelly. And after the um, ceremony, several other priests that he lived with in the rectory came up to me and said that they really appreciated that I spoke about him and, and honored his memory. And um, I guess he was just a really amazing guy, a mentor to so many other priests. So um, that was my experience with, with Father Kelly. And I still pray to him to this to this day, you know, pray for him, the repose of his soul. Um, another priest who affected my life deeply in, in high school was Father McCurdy. So Father McCurdy I had for uh, AP, um, well, it wasn't AP English. I think he taught also English, but I think it was theology class. I remember I wanted to get into the, the choir at school, but I'm not a good singer. Um, especially not during the, the tryouts. I was, I, I flubbed that so bad. But Father McCurdy um, was a very philosophical uh, fellow, an, an older gentleman as well. And um, he <laughs> told us his background one day. He was a beatnik, I guess, in the 1960s. And he knew like some of those famous, you know, beat poets. Um, he like, oh, yeah, I live with that guy, you know, and um, he had a very distinct way of talking. I don't know if I can impersonate him, but he would he would say, Matthew, what is the definition of love? Can you define love for me? <laughs> and so we spent like a whole semester trying to define these common concepts that we thought we knew, but we couldn't articulate. Um, like, what is forgiveness? And he had us um, actually write kind of an autobiography as part of our theology class and then um, define our ultimate value. What is that ultimate value that drives all your other values? For me, it was that God is love. That's one of the things I learned from him. I remember uh, throwing that out there in class because no one else was like volunteering. And he's like, yes, that is the ultimate value. Um and I was amazed that I got it right. I've never gotten anything right in his class. Um, but we would go out on nice days and we would have class under a tree and he would smoke a cigar. And I think that a lot of my classmates remember that because just go out there, talk philosophy with this guy, smoke a cigar. I mean, he was smoking a cigar. We weren't smoking cigars under a tree. Um, and it was just like amazing. Uh, so my senior year when I was preparing that valedictorian, um, valedictory speech. I had to read it to somebody, practice it with somebody to make sure it was okay. So I read it to him and I was expecting him to kind of like make some suggestions. And he said, Matt, I think it's perfect. Don't change a thing. I was just like, wow, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, so I always remember him for those, for those instances and for what he taught me about theology and defining these these concepts like forgiveness and love and my ultimate value. Um, another priest in my high school that influenced me was uh, Father Zangrando, uh, Father Z. And Father Z and I um, still talk occasionally, um, but uh, I think he was a younger priest. Um, and so in that way, a lot of us looked up to him. And he was very entertaining, very energetic, outgoing, um, just very friendly with all of us. And, and I think that was great to experience and, and see that. And I just remember telling him one time, like, I think I have a calling, but I'm not sure. Like, I, I might want to have a family. Um, and he said, you know, Matthew, whatever you decide to do, God's going to be with you. And you're going to do um, something great. You're going to do... Well, I know God's going to be proud of you. And that always struck me, you know, because I thought at the time, like, if I wasn't being a priest, then I probably wasn't going to live a godly life. I wasn't, I, I couldn't be holy. But he um, set me, set me straight, I guess, that, you know, you you can answer the call. Um, and there, are, and there are many vocations. You can, you can serve God in many different ways. That's what I learned from, from Father Z. Um, in college now, uh, I, I had some exposure to different, um, Catholic vocations. So Sister Peg, uh, Dolan was a real, is, 
you know, still a really well known figure at the university I went to in Southern California, again, a Jesuit Catholic university. And she even has a building named after her now, I think. Um, but she was my building chaplain, I think, um, freshman year and probably another year, I forget. But she was also my spiritual director on a four day silent retreat that I went on. And she led me through this um, meditation. I think I have a video posted on it on this channel where I had this personal experience with Jesus and I was telling her about it. And she's like, wow, Matt, that is such a gift that you just received. And she told me, you know, um, from those to whom much is given, much will be expected. It's a Bible verse. And I always remember that. I'm like, I've received so many gifts from God. Like, I think God's probably expecting a lot out of me also. So I, I have no other choice but to try to deliver and try to really serve God because he's given me so much. I recognize that my gifts came from God. They're not, you know, I mean, yeah, I have a great family and everything and they gave me so much, but ultimately everything I am came from God one way or another. And so I recognized through her that I have this obligation um, to serve God and, and really, you know, it should be a joyful servitude. It should not be like an enslavement, like where I feel burdened. Um, it's really a joyful servitude that I have. And so she taught me that and just was this amazing, joyful lady. Um, so many of our Catholic sisters and nuns are, are just so joyful. It always struck me. Um, but her in particular, and, and on this retreat in particular, I, I knew I could always go to her. You know, I think everyone felt that. They could always go to her with, with questions or problems, and she would deeply consider them and she would if they were sad she would be sad with them but um she would also rejoice in her daily life in just all the blessings that god had given her and she worked at the university for a long time so um sister peg dolan you know i again she's in my thoughts she, i carry a piece of her in my heart as well as all these other people and then the final one um is a presbyterian minister um the only i guess non-catholic on my list but um, Reverend Glenda Hope in San Francisco. So I, I think um, Glenda's still alive. She she would probably be like in her 90s at this point. Um, we don't keep in contact as much as I would like to, but I worked um, for her ministry in San Francisco when I was in the Jesuit Volunteer Corps after college. So after college, I spent a year volunteering in San Francisco teaching um, computers and helping with this youth program that she was running. She also ran a, um, a house, a safe house for women in the Tenderloin district of San Francisco, which is a really rough area. And so I learned a lot by working with her and I was just so privileged to have daily interactions and access to her. Um, I went to see her preach a couple times. Uh, she's this tiny lady, um, maybe five foot two, maybe, uh, with a, like a Texas accent, I want to say. Um, and, and she could, you know, she could pull it out. Like when she needed to show authority, like these kids were hiding drugs. I remember one time under the um, lip of a, a car well, a wheel well on a car. And she stepped out and she's like, boys, I see you, you know, what are you doing? You can just stop that right now. And they, man, I tell you, they got out of there so fast. Um, they knew they were wrong. And um, we had a great relationship. I loved her, her dog. She would bring her dog into work and um, I'm a dog person. So she let me uh, stay over at her house when she was out of town and take care of her dog, take care of her house and stuff. And as a volunteer, like that was just a great opportunity to be able to um, step away from my community for a little while and, and stay in a house um, by myself in, in the quiet, you know, with a dog. Uh, in a different neighborhood part of San Francisco. So that was really fun. I always appreciated that. Um, Glenda taught me a lot and I went and visited her a couple years after um, the volunteer program and talked to her again about where, what I was doing in my life. And she was always asking me like, what do you, what do you think you want to do? And I said, well, I, I think I want to be a priest. Um, and she's like, why? And so I had to think about it and I'm like, well, I like the idea of kind of like being in charge. And she said, well, that's probably not the <laughs> right approach. It's probably not the right reason to be a priest. Like if you're a priest, you, you really need to be humble. Um, 
and and the servant of all, not like the one in charge. <laughs> not, you're not up there, you know, for your own self importance. Uh, I, you know, acclaim. You you really need to be humble and like just, um, you know, soaked in humility. So she taught me that I think, and um, just through her service to the people of the Tenderloin community, just how she loved everyone, people with, with HIV and AIDS, um, the uh, folks, you know, with different sexualities, gender issues, pro uh, women escaping prostitution. It didn't matter. She loved them all. And um, she, she tried to serve them all and empower them. And, and she loved children and, you know, just amazing woman. So I know, I know that she has made a deep impact on that community and probably continues to today, although they, they've suffered a lot in recent years um, because of drugs and, and different things. So that the sense of service that she gave me um, and, and that these other influences um, instilled in me, I think carries through today and in, in what, I, what I do. And I'm just so blessed to have been exposed to these folks and to have these experiences um, I really encourage you, if you have the opportunity uh, to draw closer to a religious person in your community, learn from them. I mean, just talk to them, ask them questions, try to get spiritual direction. Send your kids to a Catholic school if you can, because they're going to have these experiences. Um, and if you're discerning uh, about going to a Catholic university, I totally encourage it. Catholic service organization, anything um, that brings you closer to this religious um, to these religious people, I think your life will be enriched by the experience. If you can visit a monastery, a seminary, whatever, and just get some time around those environments, I think um, it'll change your life. So uh, those are my words of wisdom, I guess. I just wanted to share um, some experiences I've had in my life and just speak blessings upon all of our religious people who, who work so hard and who have such a, a deep impact, if not a large impact, they have small impacts um, here and there on specific people. And, and, you know, I guess the biggest thing is that they do so with great love. And that's what God calls us to do. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.